Welcome to my makeshift sandblasting pit, or tent rather. So I'm just going to give you an update of what's been going on. Um, coming to the end of the floor pan now, the uh, sorry, the underside of the of the car. It's all been it's all been rust proofed with a pour 15 paint after sandblasting, as you've seen before. Right then, you've been watching the Cortina Mark III restoration video. Took out the inner sill, or started to at least. We fabricated a lower scutter. So yeah, that's the last bit. I mean, I'm, I'm there, and I'm also the same there on the other side. I've had a bit more luck here with the sandblaster. It's been a little bit nicer side. Let's have a look on the other side there. What have we got on there? Yeah, that's done. The blaster got in there a bit better. So we'll have a, have a quick go, but the blaster's done, done its job here. Ah, here, see, hang on. There, there's a bit more to do there, and on the underside there. Oh, we're almost there. There's no, there's no real rot at all. I'm just being a bit, a bit finicky, and I want it all off, so I can get the the metal prep in and the pour 15 onto the bare metal. Bit of under seal there. The blast I had trouble with, so we'll, we'll sandblast. Uh, sorry, we'll crock sand that. Like I said before, with the um, smooth belt on a high speed, burns it off in no time. Um, so yeah, better than the heat gun and the scraper, for sure. Now, just a worn out belt, a very, very smooth old belt that you'd probably throw away normally. And on quite a high speed, I started off at two, but then I've, I've moved up to five. And then that just kind of skims it all off nice, takes away the underseal, no issues at all. Um, and then it's... Uh, it's got us back to to there so there's some places that i can't even get this this into um so i'm gonna have to go by hand for the remaining parts bit of an annoyance well guys just a quick video to show that i have finally finished the underside um floor pan tonight the the poor 15 has gone on i just about just about had two coats two coats were this final bit which took a long time because there's lots of nooks and crannies difficult places to get the brushes in we've got to run there not a big problem because i'm going to put gravitex over it anyway so there's no need to fret too much about um a few drips i might get the paintbrush on them just tidy them up a bit yeah so you wait you put it on you wait between two and six hours before you put the second coat on you have to do it whilst the first coat's still tacky otherwise this stuff dries like blinking cement really good stuff it is so this has just gone on it's very stinky in here i've had the mask on but i've taken it off to do the video so i'm going to get out of here in a minute um after this the car's going to be twisted back down and we're going to do the do the inner sill um i'm quite happy with the result there's a few missed bits right in the end but I'll get in there with a fine paintbrush or something with but I'm kind of done now with the underside I've had, I've had a fair amount of time on it and it's looking kind of finished isn't it this is all dusty I've got the uh, remnants of the dust from the sandblasting on here this needs a good tidy up but I've before doing this I hoovered and uh, first of all on the what do you call it the um, airline then I hoovered it left it a day for the dust to settle then we acetoned it all with cloths and then we put the paint on. So hopefully that was the correct way to do it. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. It's good stuff. Um, I've heard some horror stories of people saying it peels, but that's been on now for two or three months and that looks absolutely fine. Uh, I have got a couple of holes. I've got one there where I blasted through 
two holes there. Same on the top here. So the floor pan was starting to go in the usual places. I mean. Well, we thought we had a clean bit of health on the floor pan, but there was a couple of holes. I think I mentioned in the last video, and when I kind of uh, inspected them further and um, prodded around, there was a lot of thin metal here. So what I've done is I've cut it right back to good metal. Yeah, so I've shaped it there because it's uh, it's meeting the um, the floor pan is meeting the tub. And I've, it's the, the metal unfortunately wasn't great and I've had to had to um, go around the, the lip. So this is this is oversized at the moment. A tedious old task now, isn't it, to get this to fit. Like I said, that's the best shape I could get because it's in, in a right nook and cranny. I couldn't cut it straight really because um, I just couldn't get anything in there, including the Dremel. Um, and this is a tool that I'm missing that I don't have that might work. I can't think. So yeah, that's my next job. Shape this and get it to fit. But it, but weld it in there. Just held in of its own steam. There's no tax in yet. So my my um, technique is I put some paper over it, rub my dirty hands over the paper to make a make a template. Da, 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 da. Cut it out. Now I'll cut it. So I tend to use just the old fashioned hand clippers. You know, that's almost the right angle, isn't it? So we'll just use the edge of the metal piece. There we go. I've clippered it as near as damn it. I've been generous. I've gone over. More beneficial to cut um, generously rather than exact. My weird and wonderful way of doing this got the magnet there um, and it now fits after a lot of sanding back with a crock sander we've got it into that shape okay I put a couple of tacks on and I then I was going about to tap it with a hammer but I just pressed it in and it just clicked into place so that's nice and flush there it's actually gone in a bit there so what I'll do now and so I'll put a tack here and I'll go around the other side and knock this bit back out again okay I've just been around the back to um knock this bit back through. What I used was this uh, hammer, knocked it flush. So that, now you run your hand over that and it's lovely. So we'll tack a couple more. There you go folks, a few tacks in there. Like I said, I'm hungry and cold. I'm finishing for the night. Um, I ran out of poor 15 on some last minute repairs, so I've had to use Hammerite just on a couple of areas. Yeah, I ran out of the stuff and it cost £50 pound a tin, so I'm not going to buy another tin of poor 15 just for these bits. So Hammerite Silver is going to have to do the job. Let's hope it doesn't react. Um, tonight, I'm going to put some seam sealer on the joints. Now, this stuff, according to poor 15 is good enough to use as the finished um, coating. Well, I'm not sure that they've put their... I've really thought about 1970s Ford steel, have they? which can rust on a on a nice hot day. So I've spoken to a couple of guys in the club, um, Crayford Cortina, Mark, um, he he put pour on, he put under seal over it, and he recommends as well to put seam sealer on now. And I bought some of this stuff here. Churchill, brushable. So, I know you can use the, the gun, the caulking guns and things. Um, I bought that a long time ago, not really knowing what I was doing. That's what I've got. That's what I'm going to use with a thin paintbrush. Um, yeah, so there's obviously a lot of seals on this car, so it's going to be quite a long job, this. Um, I assume you have to seal, or you should seal everything. Yes, the Paul 15 has kind of got in there really well anyway, so I might just be, you know, doubling up a lot of the time, but... It's an old car and you can never have too much of this stuff on as I bought it. I should add that if you're going to add anything to this Paul 15, it's very smooth. So what I did was a 
scotch bright pad just just lightly along the seams everywhere it took a long time that just roughs it up enough i think to make to get a grab i'm sure seam sealer will grab anyway but it all helps right then here's a bit of the seam sealer that i did um put it on with a with a brush and sometimes with my finger when it was a bit hard to get hold of the little finger got up into there to those areas uh, this is the back send of the car now because i've turned the car back over i forgot to film the seam sealing process when i um was doing it but yeah I'll just give you a quick glimpse it's nothing it's nothing special is it it's not, it's not very interesting but just to see i've gone everywhere i've gone a bit overboard probably and that's the front of the underside with its uh, seam sealer in all the nooks and crannies hopefully i've done it right it's not very pretty is it um and it needs a bit of cleaning up well folks here we are the car's back on its normal position this underside and uh, this is a little bit worse than i remember it being uh, but it's the top bit that's rotted straight through and even even through the the whatchamacallit i've got the spare so no big panic um, and it's rotten down there for a minute yeah it comes down that's where the rock kind of stops um do you do you do the whole thing that looks all like kind of mighty fine there so yeah that inspection of this tonight clean up a bit of this get it, get it get it down to see exactly what the damage is uh, wire brush i suppose and then this uh we knew about this so this is devastating but we've got the part of that too and uh, that needs to be cut out and this bit i'm hoping let's go and let's go and find the the spare part hang on a sec there we go covered in dust from the sandblasting but what have we got what have we got so down the bottom we've got rot there which can be replaced by yes and it even comes out it flares out at the bottom i think i've done this before haven't i so that's what we got there which covers oh that's brilliant that's brilliant so we've still got we're gonna take this back in a minute with the wire brush and see how bad this is because it, it don't look too great um unless anyone can stand me corrected i think it's something that is just just you can kind of easily kind of easily fabricate that i suppose right then we've taken it back with a flap disc and it's uh at least it's given us the the spot weld holes i can follow them if i want to get it off i would cut that with a with the you know the cutting disc the one mil cutting disc but under there tight up to there is the inside of the a of the uh, inner wing so you know i don't want to be i don't want to be cutting the slit over the disc along here i'll be cutting down into the a-frame there uh, the a-frame the inner wing which is good the inner wing is absolutely fine i think um unless it kind of is it curving 90 there it does it does it does but on first inspections i'd say the that is okay right just for reference i'm on the other side now and i can tell you that the panel ends just before this hole here you can't quite see my finger there but it's just before it i can feel where the panel on this side anyway it might, they might not be quite the same this side obviously a lot better i don't think we'll be needing to to do any repairs here yeah there you can see it there looking i think I think that bit there is the end of this piece. So the replacements possibly go up a bit further than the original panels. Very interesting. Learning. See, if I'd have gone in there, gung ho with a cutting disc, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I've got to find out exactly where the panels start and finish and and uh, then you can work out what you need to be doing, I think. Oh. 
So I've got the spot welds, made a start on them, made a cut down the middle because this is good metal. And I'm just peeling away gently as I go. Are we going to get a, a, a spot weld go pop while you're on? Not quite. We'll go gently on there. Same down here. Um, and I'm starting to see the bits I'm looking for now. You just missed a hell of a pop of one of the spot welds. Okay, we need to remove this entire bracket. I had a look on the express panels last night so I could see it and I couldn't really. So I think we're gonna have to refabricate. It's okay down here, it's just the top bit that's gone. You can see the spot wells, can you? There, there, there and there. So there's four, looks like only four, unless there's one possibly there as well. Well, here we are again, and I decided to remove it. Um, I was getting nowhere with the shooting in the dark, really, trying to find the spot welds to get it off the um, upper inner wing piece, which, as we're replacing, I thought, well, we, that bit's rotten anyway. Let's just let's just cut it off where roughly where we're going to replace it. So keep this; it will go back on. We'll go back on uh, in a far better repaired state. So yeah, never chuck old car parts away. That is staying. Well, guys, I've sanded off the um, the uh, piece that I'm trying to remove, the scuttle edge of the Cortina Mark III. It's all rotten here. Uh, spare part is over there. And as you can see, the spot welds are really easy to see when you do that, much easier than before. You could see them even with the paint on, so these are quite um, indented, these ones. very. Some spot welds are quite difficult, but there's quite a few here, so we need to drill these out and the bottom ones, and then we'll cut it down here, lift it off. Um, let me show you what I'm using to do that. I'm using a, a mid-2000s Makita basic drill. I mean, it is Makita, but it's not really powerful. Um, and because I'm on a budget, I'm not, I'm not receiving any kind of, I'm not doing any kind of crowdfunding for this project. I'm probably, I can't, well, I should do because I can't really afford too much on the car. But uh, yeah, I never really got it together. So oh, yeah, I'm doing a bit of a, um, what do you call it, a pilot, a pilot then, because I'm using the spot well drill bits, but they do need a bit of guidance to start off. So I'm just giving it a bit of a start off there with a smaller metal drill bit which again is could do with replacement of that and um, I bought some rather nice spot well drill bits today from uh, BML in uh, Aberystwyth that's with us it's like a metal drill bit but it's got a flatter head on it much flatter and it's got its own little guide piece there but I don't find that, that is particularly effective once these two edges get get in to the to the spot weld um, you're away then it, it really does, does work these were like 11 pound each um forget the brand i'll dig it out but so far so good they, they're much better than the previous ones i bought so um that's how i'm doing it anyway so we shall carry on and hopefully get this piece off tonight it's tr it's completely trashed in this corner i don't know and then you know, there the inner has gone and then it joins hang on if i can show you So there's two skins there, and then they just kind of, this one, the, even the inner one disappears, falling away there. I'm trying to get in on the outer, and let's see where the inner gets better. It's like, this is, that. oh God. I would say, I would say for safety, about there, isn't it? That's gonna have to be, and I can't, well, the other side is, I can't see from here so, so well, but if that's a little bit better, we can, we can have a look at that and copy it, but it doesn't look much better itself. All right, let's get into the dashboard. Bear with me a second, guys. I'll get you up in here. Looks all right. I set it up there. I can't really see myself, so that looks all right. Here in the corner, 
Yeah, that can be done. That's all right. Surface rust there. I can't see for sure. There. I have to um, look at this footage back because I can't see in there. So I'm going blind now. I can barely see some surface rust. Okay. Well, despite this car crash of a scuttle, it's nice to be working on on the top of the car after all that work on the bottom. Trying to get this last bit off of, of it. I've cut to where the, the, low, the border is of the new part. Get under there. That looks uh, a lot better there, doesn't it? But um, we've lost we've lost a bit there. It's crispy, oh, crispy from about there. Five or four. There we go. Three of them. Three of them, and we'll cut on the end. Look at that! I didn't. I didn't even go much through the lower part. It's a bit of a dodgy weld, isn't it? And that one, all on the edge. Not much of a lip. Look at the difference there. Is that meant to be like that? All right, top one next. All right, I need two hands for this. So we'll pull it back in a bit. Oh, there's one gone. Coming at me. See what's underneath. So, one, two, three, four. And then I've got this issue here, so I'm gonna have to go in with the with the blade again, and I oh so carefully because we don't want to be cutting the metal underneath if we can help it. Again, very very gentle on the grinder, and it's this just comes. There we go. I haven't even I haven't even marked underneath. Oh, that is. That's made my day. That's the only bit of good news I've had today so far. That's the underneath of it. So that's what you've got. Sorry, no, it's not. That's that's the underneath of it. Primed. One or two coats of Ford primer on there, maybe. And that's where the rot starts or the corrosion starts. That's still still very thick metal. This is a thick piece of metal. Anyway, there we go. That's what we're up against. Really, I guess, for a proper restoration, we should take the whole bloody scuttle off and, and treat it all underneath. Because I don't know. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to spray down there with the best stuff I can find, <clears throat> which is gonna be a what's well, about sixty. I don't know. It's about eighty centimeters, isn't it? Or 60, 65, 70 centimeters, all under here. Hmm, I don't know. You know, you I suppose doing that, you're damaging it quite a lot, and it's a lot of that's the fascia, that isn't it? Well, no, it's under the bonnet, I suppose. That, it's under the, that's under the window, so it's not fascia. I don't know. Really, that's bad enough to consider, isn't it? Because this bit basically almost bare metal there now, and it's just it's already rusting. It's all it's gonna go like that one day. Is that a spray of Arizona gold under there? But it's pretty much gone. Right then, I was about to cut all this off because it's rotten, and I want to get this off and it's joined here. This is the remnants of the um, scuttle end, but we can't come here and need that for templating. We need to keep it on for now because that's not the job tonight. So I'm gonna have to try and just get this off for now. I'm gonna get the whole piece off. So that then we can we can um, get some cardboard or paper out and draw draw the profile because I'm going to need <clears throat> sanded that back there. That's all right. I have to come from about there. All this lip and then down into the. Um, haven't checked, haven't inspected there yet, but yeah, I mean, this whole piece of it, isn't it? This kind of whole trough here. There we go. That's the end of the outer scuttle piece. It's all off now. Right, I'm going to call it a night there. We've uh, cut it all out, cleaned it all up, found out where the uh, 
how bad the damage is. We've got the braze on here, so I think the pillar is good. That will cover up to there. We might have to shape it a little bit, but it, it should. Um, this is worrying. That is, that is, I don't know where this comes. Is this part of this pillar that comes up to meet? That is gone. This pillar is fine, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna replace that. But inside the bulkhead looked good. So the main issues are here and a replacement lower scuttle. This started to peel away. That is the lower scuttle, but I need that. Yeah, yeah I'll leave it up for now. We'll get, we'll get the wire brush in and get all this off, all this rust. Right, template time. Um, I've got nothing to go off up here to see how far up the lower inner scuttle goes. I mean, you'd think it would go all the way up, um, but I'm not sure after looking on, online. So what I've done, luckily on the other side, we have some evidence where we have an obvious straight edge there. So the panel comes to there. So luckily this side isn't as bad and we can take these readings and measurements Transfer them to the template on the other side. Thank God for that, eh? We're nibbling away. Tough old job, but quieter than the uh, angle grinder for sure. from these fine tools and some heat and some hammers tapping away and then bending with hands once the metal's cooled tough old job this um the heating up with the hammering is kind of working but it's quite a thick metal so i have to take it off and uh, kind of make some marks with a permanent marker do a bit more luckily well i've got this for the, for the um bends the corner bits but this floor has got a bit of give in it it's a rubber floor so what i'm doing is i'm placing the when i'm needed to make a divot or something i'm placing it on the floor and tapping it and then you, you get you know with the floor bit giving it you, you get the metal to to move um i'm still struggling to get back to this backed up onto this panel here um, I'm gonna have to heat up again in a minute. I think I'm gonna try that. But this bit is kind of done. And that bit, and we're down to the floor there, but we're still rising up here. We're almost there, but yeah, it's taking time. I knew it would take time. And I'm not sure whether this lip is right either. I might have bent that a bit, a bit too, um, Depends if we can get down any more there, I think. Now we're almost we're on the floor there, so we're probably gonna have to go back and, and re-bend that. Not a problem, do that in the vice. Progress, we got the shape where I needed it, here and here. That was, it wasn't bending up there. I tried all sorts of stuff as described earlier. And in the end, I just put it on here and I beat, I beat it to death. Bit of oomph in the armour, bit of loud noise, but 
it's soon bent and that wasn't even with much heat so um yeah i was tapping away with the heat and it was it was working but it was not working brilliantly so without heat and just bang 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 hard it did the trick he is smoking smoking all right we're pretty much finished um down there you can see was the only part i couldn't really get the the lip i needed in hindsight this metal i thought was too thick it possibly is a little bit but with extra heat it it did what, what i wanted it to do so i think that you know i should have maybe um kind of kept the gas up and on it a little bit longer because when it's red hot you can just tap it and you don't have to bash it um lesson learned so for the other side we can hopefully do a quicker better job uh, so i've got a bit of welding to do there um yeah it's all right though homemade if you're not going to see it it's going to be under the scuttle completely concealed um and it kind of fits the profile we've got to make a hole somewhere there my the hole that was there has completely disappeared so i'm gonna have to kind of wait till i've done that one and then measure and, and work out it's it's in this area somewhere i think but uh, yeah so we can take this off now and then we can cut out the old one but it was brilliant to have the old one on because like for example here just now i've been banging away with the the gas and then with a hammer and this was sticking up like that um and, and i you know i could see the profile underneath of where it needed to go so it was just a case of getting it red hot and tapping it down and it just it, it conformed really well um, to the can you see that conformed really well to the profile of the the windscreen uh, dash lip what have we got under there we might have to do a little bit more under there where it uh, isn't quite coming down mind you it's missing there so probably the yeah this panel would have been as it was i think i think we're okay right then back onto the lower scuttle uh this is where i left it i've just gone over it with this i've been uh pretty harsh on it because i need to get it i need to get rid of anything that's um you know on its way to corroding so I've taken it right back um because this is the scuttle this is the um bulkhead now there's the lower scuttle all the rot rotted part is gone the upper scuttle end is there the lower one the, the fabricated one is there and um, the problem now is I've just run the um, wire wheel through on this and we've taken away all the excess rot and we knew that was there but there's a, a few more holes have appeared so we needed to find out there's one there and there's one there and there's one down there but they look these are these are pits I mean deep pits um, but that's the only hole so what I might do now is cut a new section here um, or a reduced repair from about here and I'm not sure how this works because this part here is part of this panel which is the A panel I guess which is supposed to come up to there so that's that's what latches on to the, the bulkhead so I need to try and find out the shape because I've got nothing to go on that side's no better I might have a little bit more to go on that side. I don't think so. So I need to find the shape there because that, that's got to be completely covered and sealed because that's where the rain is going to drip. And at the moment it's dripping through there. I'm just going to come out. See if you can see my hand through there. Can you see my fingers? I don't know if you can or not, but yeah, it's going to drip in through there and into the car. So that's got to be a really tidy job. Um, I think you'll have, eventually, we'll have the, the upper scuttle corner covering this, lower, upper, and then this panel here will have the support post as well on it, which is this. This will go back up over the top. So it's quite an intrinsic area of the car and I've, this is as far back as we're going to get it without now cutting the bulkhead out just that's good that's not that's borderline 
that is borderline. I mean, hang on. It does seem strong. Just that we had a we had a weakness and we found it. It might be another one there somewhere. And then you've got the braze on. I'm guessing that'll have to come off and then be rebrazed onto the new A pillar um, piece that I weld on. We're gonna cut it. I guess we're gonna cut it down here somewhere because that's pitted too. That's good. So yeah, that's a big piece, and that's a you know, that's a shape in it. That's a shape there. With a lip going up onto this part. And then it's how it I'm guessing it's gonna match here and braise. Hmm, that could be a bit beyond my current capabilities. We'll see. Well, we're coming along, getting the inner sill off in chunks. Tidying it up then with a the grinder. The little bits that are left on the old sill. Because then you, you're getting it back to a smooth metal surface instead of, you know, like a drill indentation, which has probably gone through, some most of the time it goes through to the floor pan as well, making it thinner. So where I've got a uh, remnant of a spot, I'll just uh, tidy it up like that. And I've done it, where have I done it? There, that's a good one, that's a good example. And then you get a nicer, nicer finish and a thicker bit of metal on the remaining surface, I think. Another one might pop there, which means that whole section is now off. Go in section, see? We've got two sections done now. This one's tougher because it's got the um, welds on the other side of that support bar, which I thought I'd drilled, but I got nowhere near because it's still solid. I need to just uh, gradually get in this sill off. Just picking the basically what's happened is I've gone along followed the spot welds from the outer sill onto the floor pan marked through but um sorry they have to the following the spot marks on the inner sill thinking that that must be the one they use to spot weld the outer to the inner to the floor pan turns out not no so they were just for the inner to the outer and it's actually different spot welds they've used for the inner to the I guess that yeah thinking back they possibly put the inner sill on um not at the same time as the outer sill so there we go at the factory so you've got different spot welds not 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 one that does all three panels I think that's what I'm finding anyway as I'm going along I'm finding uh, separate dimples to the ones I thought I'd be drilling out thanks for watching my video um that was episode 20 of a um, Cortina Mark III 2000 E restoration. Um, I don't know how many more episodes there'll be because the project is nowhere near finished. Um, so hopefully there'll be a, a lot more as I, as I go along. So we're onto the we're onto the shell now, um, the upper part, having done the the floor. Um, so it should be should be get a bit more interesting and uh, get a bit more kind of hands on with the uh, the major major parts of the project coming up. But if you are thinking of doing your own project um, of Cortina, especially Mark III. Um, some advice from me would be to first and foremost join the Mark III Owners Club. Um, there's a wealth of knowledge there with some very experienced folk. Um, they have a website um, with a forum which is which is very popular and a Facebook group but probably the most important um, thing that happens within the club um, for communication is the monthly, sorry the quarterly newsletter. This is one from Christmas 23. It's, um, it's spring 24 now, so I think I've got the latest edition in the house somewhere. But in here, there's a wealth of um, information and also parts that um, you can't really get anywhere else now on the open market. Things like um, the, uh, uh, for example, rear seat boot divider, which is fabricated by the chairman, Paul Runton. Um, he also does, uh, look at that there, there's a whole load of bolts, uh, nuts and bolts, um, which you can get for the front shock, shock absorbers, for example, rear anti-roll bar, front back plate bolts, front anti-roll bar, battery tray bolts, goes on and on. So I'll be getting some of those when I, when it comes around to it. Um, yeah, there's 
there's other uh, things that there's the void, the um, boot void area covers, which Paul again um, makes. Uh, you can order them directly from the club. Um, yeah, and then they, they, they just arrange when, when you can pick things up at shows and, and uh, the NEC show or in the summer shows to avoid postage. Um, yeah, that, that's probably the most important thing. And then from there, you're going to get the um, contacts. You've got your area managers. For or your area set or area reps for each part of the UK, um, so just uh, just get in touch with them. Courtney and Mark Three Club, um, Helen Helena is the secretary. Helena Ray, I'll try and post their comp their details on this video. Um, yeah, and apart from that, I, I've got to thank people like um, Keith Macy, who's um, Pete. Uh, sorry, he's Cortina Man on YouTube. Cortina Man sixty three, I think he is. Uh, his project is is a long term project, but he. His attention to detail, probably the, the most um, uh, thorough restoration of a shell, at least, that I've ever seen, worth watching. Um, and I've got, um, oh, we've got Cortina City. I mean, that's that's the go-to video for any particular part of a project you're doing. And Pete did for Cortina, so if you're stuck on, I don't know, like I'm stuck on this lower corner, lower scuttle here, Pete made a video about how to do it. I mean... I just uh, got in touch with him and he he, said, he, he told me that he, he, he had an episode of um, Bramble when I found it and jobs are good and helped me a lot with my this last thing I've just done on this car. Um, yeah, there's other there's there's other people too. Um, there's Mark from uh, Craveford Cortina. I think he is on Instagram. Always helpful as well. Uh, helped me with my uh, under underfloor. So yeah, there's people out there that can really help. I'm sure it's the same with other other cars and uh, other clubs too but the Cortina club is, is, is going strong and um, I'm thankful I don't I don't uh, manage to make it to, to many of their events being out here in Wales and with a car that's kind of stuck here for a little while but in the future I hope to to, to get along to some more of their their events that they do um, so yeah thanks for watching see you next time <laughs>